Let me begin by saying that I consider the call uh, for general elections in Barbados uttered by the Prime Minister yesterday officially to be quite callous and reckless. The idea of calling a general election in Barbados in the middle of a pandemic, which has been worsening for us in terms of its impact, and if you make reference to the numbers of both those persons infected and those persons who have passed on, it can't be anything less than reckless and callous to call a general election a year and a half before constitutionally it is due. Now, when we had the by-election in St. George North, at a time when the impact of the COVID presence among us was not that severe, I, echo, I, said, I expressed the view then that it was not in the interest of the well-being of the people of Barbados to call a by-election in St. George North. And then for the party in government to be seen visibly, actively, encouraging people to come out in crowds to attend political meetings and various other forums. If I thought that was wrong then, obviously I think that this is wrong now. It was not necessary to have the by-election then. It was a matter of political convenience for the party, the government. It is not necessary to have a general election now one year and a half before it's constitutionally due date. In the middle of a pandemic, when we're facing down the prospects of having the latest of the variants being present among us, and the government really should tell us if that variant is already here and not make glib statements around it. I heard the Prime Minister say, it is coming. Well, I don't want to hear tomorrow that it is here when in fact we knew that it was here, even when we said it was coming. So I think we need to have clarity on that. But the whole notion of calling a general election a year and a half before it is constitutionally due could only, in my view, um, be motivated by crass political considerations designed to serve advantage to the Barbados Labour Party at this time. Prime Minister, repeatedly said in a press briefing yesterday, she wants to have an election now because we must have one government. But how many governments do we have in Barbados today? We have one government. How many prime ministers do we have in Barbados today? As far as we know, one, unless there are others within the bosom of the Barbados, their party who are suggesting to her otherwise. Certainly we recognize one prime minister in Barbados today and one government. So when you repeatedly say, in a 37-minute statement that you're calling an election and you're premising the reason for calling that election upon the, the, the view that you want to have one government in Barbados, one prime minister, one governmental leader in Barbados, that we want to approach what is before us with one government as one people. When you're saying these things, what in effect are you saying to Barbadians? Well, if there was ever a time we had one government in Barbados, it is now. We've only got one person in the opposition in the lower house. We got two in the opposition in the upper house in the Senate, and who by my say have been doing a tremendous job in keeping the interests of Barbadians at the forefront of their debates and their statements, both in that upper chamber and in the public arena, standing up for Barbadian interests. That is what they've been doing. So you have an opposition of small numbers, but with great voice, and I think to tell in effect they've exercised their duties on behalf of the people of Barbados. But at the end of the day, there is one government. You have a government with 29 people in the lower house and 12 representatives in the upper house. That's 41 people. So what are you telling us that you're calling election because you need to have one government? There is but one government. When I hear that call, in the context of the reality that we live, what I'm hearing is a call for one partyism in Barbados, single partyism in Barbados. It would seem as though the Prime Minister wants that her voice is the only voice that is heard. It would seem as though the Prime Minister wants that the government can dictate to us on everything and the people of Barbados can't raise a voice in query or a voice in contradiction 
or a voice in expression of an alternative view. That is looking to have a one-party state in Barbados. Pray tell me, friends, where in Barbados do we see more than any one government existing right now? There's one government led by the Prime Minister, constituted of members of the Barbados Labour Party, 29 of them in the lower house, and 12 of them in the upper house. No one government, there is one government. So if you're saying that and you're saying it repeatedly with emphasis and you're premising your call for an election on that, you are actually calling for a one-party state. You're calling for one-partyism in Barbados. You're asking the people of Barbados to let's go back to the polls a year and a half early and vote for all Barbados Labour Party candidates so that there's none in the lower house and none can be appointed to the Senate. That is what a... So you want to have an election in the middle of a pandemic when you're telling people that they can't go to church. They're telling people that they can't go to church. And if they go to church, they can only go to church in limited numbers. And I understand that. And I respect that. But you can tell people they can't go to church to worship and serve their Lord and to have fellowship with each other. But that we can have a general election in Barbados in the middle of a pandemic a, a year and a half before it is constitutionally due. You're telling people in Barbados they can't go to the hospital to visit their relatives because they're going to spread the virus, contaminate the, the environment in the, in, the, in the hospital and threaten the lives and well-beings of patients and staff. You're telling people they cannot go to the hospital to visit their relatives, but they can participate in a general election a year and a half before it is necessary. You're telling people that they can't go to the funeral of their friends and loved ones because you're going to spread the virus and other people will die. So we can't go to the funeral of friends and loved ones. We can't go to funerals of relatives because the numbers are limited, but we can have an election in Barbados a year and a half before it is necessary.